Hi everyone! In this lecture, we will introduce a few important facts regarding analytic geometry, starting with a line. There are a few ways to represent a line on the plane. We can use a simple first-order equation with three parameters, or we can use the classical representation using a slope and y-intercept. But the best way to represent a line by an equation given two points is to calculate the slope and then use this equation using one of the points which are given to us x null, y null in this example. Even better, if we are given a slope and a point, we can use this equation to represent the line. This is most probably the most efficient way to write the line's equation, and by using other representation we will waste important time on redundant calculations. We have an equation for an angle between two lines, but what you really need to remember is that the product of the slopes is minus 1 if and only if the lines are perpendicular. Example. What is the line through 2, 3 and 3, 4? The slope is 1, so we can choose 2, 3 and calculate this equation. Or we can use the other point. Those equations are equivalent. For the parabola, we always need to be aware of the vertex and the roots. This is the most general equation for the parabola, either in x or in y. Let's concentrate on the left equation, which is more standard. A useful representation is by one parameter, a, and the roots, even if they are complex. The vertex can be found by taking the derivative and solving for zero. And we have the good old quadratic equation at our disposal in order to find the roots. A useful remark is that the x value of the vertex is the mean of the x values of the roots due to symmetry. For example, let's say that as a part of a problem in the exam, you have to find quickly the parabola with vertex at minus 2, 9, and a root at 1. The fastest way is to find the other root using the symmetry property. Then represent the parabola like that and plug in the vertex. Voila! You can verify the vertex by taking the derivative. The equation of the circle is well known. Just as a reminder, x null, y null are the coordinates of the center of the circle, and r is the radius. This is exactly as to state that the distance of xy from x null, y null is r, i.e. the circle is the locus of all the points, which the distance from x null, y null is exactly r. Sometimes we can see the circle equation like that. The ellipse has a similar equation. Just note that a is not necessarily equal to b. When a is bigger, we say that 2a is the length of the major axis and 2b is the length of the minor axis. We also have a notion of locus to define the ellipse. To do that, we set two focus points or in plural, foci, and the ellipse is the locus of all points whose the sum of distances from the foci is 2a, meaning, given two focus points and a number a, we have an ellipse. 2a should be bigger than the distance between the foci in order to avoid degenerated cases. It can be proven that the foci are on the major axis. How should we find them? First, observe that the sum of the lengths of a0 from the foci is 2a regardless of the value of c. 
So, turn to 0b. By symmetry, the length from each focus point to b is a. And now we have a simple right triangle. Find c using the Pythagorean theorem. If b is bigger than a, this is the shape of the ellipse, and the foci are on the y-axis. a equal b is like a circle. You don't need to remember the orientation of the ellipse in each case, just remember to plug in a0, 0b when drawing the ellipse to yourself when solving a problem. The hyperbola is represented by these equations. Depends on the orientation. Here also remember to plug in a0, 0b, which will give you the orientation. The notion of the foci of the hyperbola does not repeat often enough in the exam to justify talking about it right now, but we will talk about it in the advanced module. The hyperbola has asymptotes of plus minus b over a x. Regardless of the orientation, we have the same asymptotes. Let's see that. Solve for y and see that when x is very large, such that plus 1 or minus 1 are insignificant, we get the asymptotes as required. Quiz. This question should take the full 2.5 minutes. Stop the video now and test yourself. The answer is coming in a few seconds. The answer is D. Drawing everything would make it a much easier question. This question requires high concentration since it has a lot of givens and we need to handle a new definition of a point inside a graph. But after overcoming that, drawing the parabola is very easy. By trying different minor axis points of the ellipse, you see that you can choose b equals 1 to meet the criterion of three points of intersection between the graphs. Then you can see that the major axis A of the ellipse, which is the distance between the B point and one of the focus points, is square root of 2. It is beneficial to remember that square root of 2 is approximately 1.4, and the answer follows. This is the exact drawing. Next time, we will tackle polynomials.